Hey, welcome back to the channel, Glamplanders. In the last video, we installed the uh, CA tuned uh, bumper bar on my 24 Outback Wilderness. And when we left that video, I told you I was going to install some Harbor Freight Road Shock LED lights, and we got that done. So I'm going to try to do just a walk around uh, video, uh, kind of show you what those look like, how they mounted up, and uh, some tips and tri tricks that may help you um, install your Harbor Freight lights uh, if you decide to get them. So let me turn the camera around and we'll kind of get to it. So uh, this is the bar with the lights installed. I went ahead and left the uh, amber cases on there really for aesthetic purposes. I thought uh, with our black Outback Wilderness that it just really popped and looks really good. And the light output of these things is incredible and uh, kind of like the amber glow, doesn't look too bad. One thing I did talk about in the last video is uh, this bar, it's about $500 and it does not come with uh, any kind of a way to attach a light. So it doesn't come with like tabs where you can put a screw in, you would have to drill a hole. Or the other option is they sell a uh, set of brackets for $150 and they're really nice. I believe they're out of aluminum, but I thought that was a little steep for brackets. So in my case, I had these brackets I got from Amazon about four years ago. I had them on a kayak trailer to put some auxiliary lighting on and it's kind of what I had around the house. So it's what I used and it worked just fine and probably saved me about $130. So uh, the next thing kind of is talking about how to wire up these lights. So the lights themselves come with uh, this wiring harness. And so it's really nice. Uh, I would definitely think it's waterproof. I'm not sure about the IP rating. And it has four wires coming out of it. And so you have your high beam, your low beam, your daytime running lights, and your ground. So I brought these home. I was going to make my own wiring harnesses like I would normally do. And it just gets to be a lot of wires. And I bought a wireless switch that I'll talk about in a minute. And so I went back to Harbor Freight and I paid the 60 bucks for their wiring harness. And tip number one, just get the harness while you're there. I felt like it was a lot of money for a wiring harness, but at the end of the day, I sit around to try to figure out how I was gonna wire these up and spent probably an hour. I went and got that harness, came back and actually had the wiring done for these in probably 15 minutes. They've made it really simple uh, to do. So I'm gonna turn the camera back around. So when you get the wiring harness, basically it comes already pre-wired for the two things. It goes into a Y, it comes up to a relay, and then you just hook those up to your battery. Uh, positive, positive, and I went ahead and just did uh, the negative. And so at that point, your wires are ready to go. It comes with a three-way switch, which I did not like, so we'll talk about that now. So I wanted to run these lights from a wireless switch. I was hoping to kind of go the easy way and not have to run a wire through my car, through the firewall. So I found this, it was called the Poveter uh, Wireless Switch. And I had seen it, uh, somebody talk about it on Facebook and the reviews were okay. And I don't really like to, to down products because it could be uh, user error, but the Bluetooth part is where it fails. So get to that in just one second. But uh, back to the wiring for, for a minute. So basically you take that switch, uh, you cut off the leads and then you can put in your high beam and your low beam you wire those up to a connector. And so then you're basically, you already have a ground with this. And so you're basically sending a uh, power to your relay that tells it, you know, which light to turn on. And so you can do that with your switch. You don't have to use their kind of ugly, uh, bulky switch. But the key thing with, uh, with this switch is, and I'll put it up there again. Again, the concept is really, really cool. Uh, I assume it goes off Bluetooth, but the issue I have is, uh, so these work when the car is running. I have them wired that way. And if the hood is open and you're standing here, they work flawlessly, never fails. Uh, once you close the hood and you're driving down the road, uh, it's, it can be 50-50, that's probably a little low, but it just doesn't work all the time. Again, at least in my situation. So uh, I've decided I'm gonna return that and probably just get the normal uh, ox beam uh, switch and run it through the firewall so that way I know when these lights, uh, they're too bright, you can't blind somebody. I live out in the country and we don't have a lot of traffic out here, but we do have lots of deer, which is kind of the reasoning for the lights. And, uh, but if somebody's coming, you definitely can't blind them. So I can't take the chance on not being able to turn the lights off. But the concept was great. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe I got a bad unit. Maybe it's something in the Subaru that keeps the signal from going through. Uh, but at least in my case, I, I can't recommend it. And your mileage may vary. You may get it and it may work great. It's kind of the way these kind of things, uh, things work. Uh, so what I'll do now is uh, I'm gonna put in some uh, video of these lights at night to show you uh, how well they work. And if you're still here at the end of that, I appreciate you. We have some great content coming up. So if you can like and subscribe, uh, it helps the channel a lot. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.